John, I mean, what, 40 years ago did you think you'd be sitting here 40 years later playing your, your back catalogue of, of music? I mean, I'm, I'm talking when you started the, the uni band, the Moonshine and Jug Band. Did you ever think this would eventually? Yeah, well, you know, the, the Moonshine Jug and String Band was really something we did because we wanted to have some fun on the weekends. Meet know. chicks. Have a drink. Yeah, all of that. And you know it's a long and and it was it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. The Moonshine Jug and String Band, uh, I can tell you proudly is going to be inducted into South Australian Hall of Fame this year. And uh, we'll perform. Of course Doc won't be there, but um, uh, maybe Craig Holden, because Craig Doc actually replaced Craig Holden. Mark Doc, Holden's brother. He's uh, Mark Holden's brother. <laughs> More better looking and uh, Obviously, yeah, hey, he's he actually he's far too good looking. I don't, I don't think we could have him in the band. Um, but um, but you know, tracing it all all the way back, you know, we we really, you know, I mean, Rick was doing agricultural science for God's sake. I was I was doing filmmaking and drama at Flinders Uni, uh, and th this, you know, we never actually had this vision necessarily. Yeah. Just that I wrote this song called "Keep You on the Move." And just this last week, we lost Daisy Day. Now, Daisy Day is one of South Australia's legendary jocks, and he died just a week ago. He and used to win Logies back in the in the eighties. He'd win Logies like nationally mm. because of all the votes he'd get. He had like he had the biggest listening audience at one stage um, in Australian history. I don't know if the, the thing still stands. All about rock, and obviously in South Australia, where all these bands came, everyone came from there. Yeah, he was a huge influence in promoting all those guys. Yeah, and I mean, Daisy just started a week ago today, actually, and uh, uh, we had a celebration for Daisy at the Arkaba Hotel, uh, which was one of our haunts back in those days. And uh, the point about him is uh, that he was a lovely guy. But uh, when we recorded that very first single. Um, we took it to Daisy Day at 5K and said, can you please play this? And back in those days, you know, radio jocks actually could actually go, yeah, I'll play that on my radio show. You know, it wasn't all programmed. Yeah. And, right. and so Daisy played that single and, and it went number four on the charts. And I always sort of think it's probably because Mum went out to the, all the record stores and bought the, <laughs> all these copies of Little the Little town Adelaide in that day, <laughs> those days, not it? <laughs> but, it, but it went on to high rotation airplay and all that stuff, you know. And we just went, you know what? We've got to change the band. We can't continue as a jug band because that was really a rock and roll song. It was a rock song recorded with, you know, banjos and washboard and all that stuff, you know. What was the song, John? What was the song? It's called Keep You On The Move. It's a f reasonably banal <laughs> a attempt at my very first song. I mean, the lyric is pretty silly, really. But that's a good question. I mean, for John to have been 41 years and not um, years in the wilderness, songs that have remained as, as high a priority to the fans all through their career and, you know, and, and for the... Uh, I, I have, I, going to speak on behalf of John because I'm, he's too humble to say but for these guys to be 40 years on and people coming up and going I want to hear that song I want to hear that song I want to mm. hear that. but you guys are you know it, it must be uh, it, it, and it should be a hugely gratifying thing to uh, to John and Rick to have created this 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 true historical path in Australian rock I mean a thousand years from now when people are talking about it if <laughs> well, look, yeah, massive, a, a, massive about part, Australian rock. Part, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But did you ever consider that was going to happen, John? <laughs> I really, in the beginning. To be honest, I really don't know. All I know yeah. is that once we formed the, what well, you know, the Angels, which started off being called the Keystone Angels, yeah. but once we formed that band and then turned our back on any kind of other career that might have been offered to any of us, yeah. and got into my old EH. Holden Station Wagon, 1964, and spent four years travelling around Australia in that car, just going from gig to gig to gig. Uh, and by the way, that car never missed a beat. Yeah, Holden, yeah. see, we're Holden men. It was, uh, and we but, love Holden yeah, women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, from the moment we did that, we were hell-bent. You know, we, we yeah, we, we, had, we had ambition. Seriously, we wanted to make it. And particularly after we met ACDC, because we met those guys in in 1975 after we'd 
played with Chuck Berry and um, I played bass for Chuck Berry, Rick played piano and our drummer Charlie King played the drums. Uh, and the, the Keystone Angels opened and then we, some of us played with him. And after that we met ACDC and we did three gigs with them. One was in Port Pirie, the next one was Wyala and then um, Port Augusta. And they were tra travelling around in this bus, it was like an old uh, Pioneer bus with a round back on it and they had all their gear in the back and the seats in the front and they had a bus driver. And I remember sitting with Bon Scott and the, at a Port, Augusta, uh, Port Augusta, which was the last gig of the tour, it was after the gig. And uh, he was telling me about all their plans for overseas and, and he said to me, you know, uh, we're going to be one of the biggest bands in the world. And, and he said it in such a way that wasn't like we're bragging. We're going to be one of the biggest bands in the world. You know, and, and, I, and I just said to him, yeah, I, I, I knew they would be too. And he said, you know why? And I said, you tell me. He said, it's because we got Angus. And I said, don't sell yourself short, Bob. <laughs> yeah. awesome. But of course... Just because they had all those guys, I mean that was a great band. And uh, what's the point of that? The point of that is that one of the things you know we got on, we got on great. In fact, they got us our first record deal with Harry Vanner and George Young. And one of the things we picked up from those guys right from the start was that number one, they had their sights set overseas, and and they also <laughs> reckon they were the be they were better than anybody. But they had that belief, and and uh, and they did it in kind of tongue in cheek. But you know, you talk about so various. So I mean, we're better than anybody. Yeah, tongue, yeah, yeah. Tongue in cheek. <laughs> but he you know, said knowingly. But Angus was great. I mean, somebody would say, oh, "What do you think of Jimi Hendrix?" Ah, oh, he can't play the guitar. I'm much better. Than, you know, yeah, yeah. and and but the and of course he didn't mean it. But the, but the point is that they had that belief, and uh, and so did we. And and so you know, we'd knock down brick walls to get there. And, and the wonderful thing about those days was that we played every night of the week. So you'd write a song, and this is what we're really coming back to about songs that have lived and still do live for people. You'd write a song and you put it on stage that night. And if, it, if people looked stared back blankly at you, you'd go, we'd better write a better song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and you can't necessarily just pin it down to that either because there's all these other things around you. You know, we're like sponges, you know, particularly when you're young and you, you know, and we were around ACDC all the time and, you know, and we didn't copy them, and didn't copy them at all, but we were sure influenced by them. And we, and, and as bands, we only had ourselves, we were the gang, right? And, and I, you know, I talk from what we, we took from the bands, like what supporting the Angels and all that stuff. You were a gang and you're out there and you were the best gang and that was the thing that you were doing. Yeah. And, and you didn't want, like, although you wanted fans at the gigs, this is the, the difference between now and then, is you didn't have to amass people on Facebook or yeah. YouTube or whatever. Face to face. You, you, you guys were the band, yeah. and everywhere you went, you were like, yeah, we're here, we're here to do this, and that's what's going to happen, you know? And, that was, and it wasn't, as John said, it wasn't a smart-ass thing, it was just self-belief that was driven by nothing more than the guys in the band and the spark that, that happened when you were all together and the fire that came from, from that spark, you know, so. Well, hey. Joe, we should write that down and make a song of that. That's beautifully put. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, call it, it fucking works. Yeah, just because it works. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, you're, you're, you're asking the question too, that mm. did you foresee, you know, 40 years later, you'll still be out there playing in a rock yeah. band and, and, you know, the songs would be big songs for people etc no of course not you know i mean you know it was like we didn't i mean i guess if you're a if, you know if you're a brain surgeon you're gonna you're gonna see that that's your career and that's your life and you can do it all until you retire but they made it up as they went along we did <laughs> who knew i mean who knows you know i mean and and i think it's a wonderful thing that that rock has survived for not you know as, as a as a music but not just for young people but for for all of us it's to me it's like the blues yeah. you know bb king just died yeah was it yesterday i think and uh you know and he was what 89, 89. and you know and les paul was, he was just hitting his straps as a real blues man you know? <laughs> and he was still playing and you know <laughs> if, he had about, if he had to live to 94 they would have said yeah he was a real thing man but you know that that's the thing we didn't know that that could happen 
yeah. we didn't know that yeah. that could happen. And no, I mean, no one would have thought, oh yeah, well we'll still be, you know, playing when, in later life. But the fact is, we are. Well, actually, in my case, in Rick's case, I mean, we're the two old guys in the band. Dave's way younger, and then we got Sam and Nick. Yeah. And what a great combination. Oh, well, look, yeah, we, we, were, we were watching, and, and we thank you. We really do thank you guys for, you know, putting on the shows you do. It's, it, it's a real deal. We love it. Know? I mean, we yeah. really do. And I mean, yeah. It, yeah. To, to have a band where we all have a great laugh and yeah. and, and hang, enjoy hanging out with each other, you'll often see us all eating not breakfast together because I'm never up. No, forget that. But, but most of the guys <laughs> eat breakfast together, and we all, you know, we all enjoy each other's company, and then yeah. to be able to get up on stage and rock out. I mean, it's it truly is. It's and we're just, we're just, having a laugh, really.